Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to be creating a spelling test in Scratch. So the way that this program is going to work is that the program will actually say a word out loud, and the user will have to try to spell it, giving one letter at a time. So in this project, we're going to be using a couple of loops, list, and string indexing. So if you haven't learned about any of those three things yet before, go ahead, check out our channel, watch the videos that cover those first, and then come back here to work on this project with me. So without further ado, let's get into today's project. All right, so as you can see, we're starting from a slightly different place than we have in the past. Today, we're going to actually be using some starter code. So you can find the link to the starter code in the description box down below. Um, and I'll show you how to use the starter code and start building on it. So once you click on the link, this is the page that you will see. You'll have to make sure that you're signed into Scratch first in order to see this remix button. But if I go ahead and click on this remix button, it makes a version of this project for myself. So this is a brand new project with some starter code. And this project actually has some nice instructions for us. So we can kind of use these instructions um, alongside, uh, like we can look at these instructions while we work on the project. So I'm going to move this over here a little bit. And let's see what we have so far. So as it says here, the starter code already has a secret word picked out and saved in the secret word variable. So we have this secret word variable that is picking a random word from a word bank that has been pre-created. So this project assumes that you haven't worked too much with lists yet, which is why that, which is why they have this done for you. So let's take a look at our secret word. And I'm actually just going to get the save block over here. And then I'm going to come down here to variables and I'm going to pull the secret word so that we can see what our word is. So algorithm, and you'll see if I run it again, you get amazing. We'll see if I run it again, you get Python. So one little trick, if you're curious about the words that are in the word bank, you can come over here and just check this box and it will show you the list of all of the words. And same with these variables, um, you can kind of see the secret word like that as well. So I think I'm gonna show the word for now just so that we can have access to it and use it as an example. Okay, so once again, like I said earlier, we're gonna actually have the program speak the word out loud. So just like how if you're in a spelling bee, for example, right, the person who's running the bee will say the word out loud and then you have to try to spell it. So we're kind of mimicking a similar thing. To do that, we're gonna actually add a little plugin to our project. So we're gonna come down here on the bottom left and we're going to choose the text to speech. There we go. So notice that we have three blocks, three new blocks, one that says speak. And if I click on this, and let me actually make sure I'm sharing my sound. There we go. Okay, so if I click on this, you'll hear. Hello. There we go. Hello. Hello. So that is how we can get our text to speech. And you can also change like the, your voice. So if I change this to uh, a kitten, for example. Meow. It sounds a little different, and they have some different languages as well. So I, for example, speak Korean. Let's see what happens if I try clicking on this. Meow. <laughs> and you could, I could probably put in some Korean for it to to work. But for now, all we need is basic English. So let's get English back up on here, and I'll keep this at alto, and we'll keep it like that. So I'm clicking on these just to actually use the blocks. Um, I could also come here and press it here, but all right, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the the this block actually speak the word out loud. So now we'll be able to, oops, not a word bank. We actually want our secret word. There we go. So if I click on the green flag, we'll hear. Coding. Coding. Awesome. All right. So here we have our word. So, well, I'm going to actually make this a little bit more fancy by grabbing this join block. And what the join block does is it allows us to add two strings together. So if you forget what a string is, a string is a combination of numbers and letters um, that, that are considered a like text type as opposed to a number type. And so you can add strings together by using this join block. For example, I can say the secret word is, and then put this here. And now when I put it here, it's going to say the secret word is and whatever the secret word. So let's try that. The secret word is incredible. There you go. All right. So that is our um, that is how we're going to present the word to the user. And so I'm going to 
um, have us wait one second just so that the user has some time. And then I'll say text to speech. Type the letters in one at a time in order. OK, so we want the user to type these words in one at a time. So let's start from just getting the user to type in the first letter of the story, right? So how can we do this? We're going to first come here and we're going to grab the ask block. So this ask block is what allows us to actually give the user a prompt and be able to take in their answer and save it inside of something. So here I'm going to say enter a letter like this. And then the user is going to be able to type that letter in. So let me the go ahead. The secret word is incredible. Type the letters in one at a time in order. There we go. So it said that. And now, for example, I'll be able to say I and type that in. So how, where can we find where the user actually um, answered us, right? We can actually use this answer block, which is paired with the ask block. So if I, for example, grab a say block again, and then just say answer. Well, sh we should be able to see whatever I type in on the screen. So let's try that. The secret word is amazing. Type the letters in one at a time in order. So then if I say A for amazing, there we go. So how do we, how can we check to see if the letter that the user typed in matches, for example, the first letter of this word? So how do you think we can do that? Well, we can come over here to operators and how can we first get the first letter? Like, let's say we just wanna say A from amazing, not A what the user answered, right? How can we say that? We can come over here and we can take this block, letter one of, and if I come and grab my secret word, you'll see that when I press on this block, what does it give me? A. And if I say two, what does it give me? M. So I can use these numbers to get the actual word. So for example, I can have letter one of a secret word, and then I can get a conditional statement over here that says, um, if this letter is the same as the answer, then we can say like correct or something of that nature. So let's go over here to the operators. We're going to grab this equal block. Where is it? Here it is. And we're going to say, if the first letter of secret word is the same as the answer that the user gave us, then we can say correct. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to say answer. So if the answer is the same as the first letter, and then I can put that here. And I'll come to text to speech and I'll say correct. Like that. OK, so let's try that and see how it works. The secret word is incredible. Type the letters in one at a time in order. So now if I type in the letter I, the first letter. Correct. It says correct. And then I can do an else that says incorrect, for example. And what I'm going to, the way that I'm going to make this work is that if the user gets a letter wrong, they lose and the, the program ends. So I'm going to say, um, sorry. That letter is incorrect. You'll get it next time. And then I'm going to grab, or yeah, let's let's do it like that, actually. And then let's try again. This time I'm going to say- The secret it. word is Python. Type the letters in one at a time in order. OK, so I'm going to put in a random letter, G. Sorry, that letter is incorrect. You'll get it next time. There we go. So we made it so that if the user gets the question right, we'll get, say correct. If the user gets it wrong, we'll say incorrect. So we're getting closer to what we want for this project. However, we want to be able to go through the entire word and check each word one at a time. So what can we use to do that? We can use a repeat block, so a loop. So I'm going to come over here to control, and I'm going to say repeat. So how many times do we want to repeat it, right? As you can tell, we have different words and each word has a different length, but we wanna repeat this loop as many times as there are letters in the word. So what we can do is we can actually repeat by length of the word. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to come to length of in the operators. 
and I, I'm gonna grab our secret word, um, secret word variable. So you'll see here, if I click here, we get six because there are six words in, six letters in the word Python. So now this is gonna repeat six times, but if I refresh it and the get a secret different word, word I... you'll see that we get another number, nine for algorithm. So we can go ahead and put that there. And if we try running it right now, what do you think is gonna happen? Let's take a look. The secret word is computer science. Type the letters in one at a time in order. So here, I'm going to type in C. Correct, 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 correct. And notice what happens. Correct, it's asking me a bunch of times. Why is that? It's because after we check the, the correct answer, it goes back into the loop and just keeps checking to see if that answer is correct. So what do we actually want to do here? We want to actually move this say this um, ask block inside the repeat because we want to continuously ask the, the user for a letter. So we're going to do this and we don't need the say block. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it to the side and then let's try it now. The secret word is Python. Type the letters in one at a time in order. So I'm going to try P. Correct. And then now I'm going to try Y. Sorry, that letter is incorrect. So You'll why get do you think it time. said that letter is incorrect? That's because we're checking to see if it's only the first letter of secret word versus if it's the next letter, right? And you need the second time when we go into this loop, we need this number to be two. So what can we do? We can create a variable that starts from one and updates every single time we go through the loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make a variable and I'm just gonna call this counter. And I'm gonna set counter to one at the beginning of our program. So I'll just put this up here. And then I'm gonna, instead of saying one, I'm gonna put counter here. And if the user gets the number correct, I'm gonna change counter by one. So I'm gonna increase counter by one so that when we start, counter is equal to one. And then here, we're gonna say letter one of secret word. We get it correct, counter increases by two. We come back in again, the, ask the user for the, for the letter. And this time counter will be two. So we'll be checking the second letter with that, with that second, um, second letter. That second, time we go through the loop, we'll be able to guess the second letter. Okay, so let's try that. And I'll keep this counter so that you can see it change up here. The secret word is incredible. Type the letters in one at a time in order. So I'm going to say I. Correct. N. Correct. There we go. And now it's working. Correct. R. Correct. E. Correct. And if I get it wrong, for example, so let's say I say B. Sorry, that letter is incorrect. You'll get it next time. Awesome. So after it says sorry, right, we actually want the program to end. So how can we get this program to end? We can say stop. Where is it? It is up here in control. We can say stop all. And that's going to pretty much tell the program, OK, we're done. Don't continue repeating. Just move on from this um, else statement to the end. And so what we can do now is when the user gets everything correct, we want to be able to, um, to let them know that, hey, nice job. After they've gotten everything correct, we want them to say, like, congrats, you spelled it correctly. So I'm going to actually show you a little trick. This is not the most intuitive, but what we can actually do is we can actually put a speech to a uh, text to speech block at the very end after we've completed the repeat. And you might be wondering, well, if they get the letter wrong, right, it's gonna stop here, but then it's gonna come over here. Actually, stop all is gonna stop everything. It's gonna make sure that there nothing happens, the program's done, it's gonna be complete. So if we have this else block and we stop all, we're actually never gonna make it to this, this line. However, if we finish the repeat block, and so we go through the entire length of the word, and we finish and we've gotten all the words correctly, then it's actually going to continue past skipping this else statement, because this wasn't true, and then say this speak, this speak um, block. So what I'm going to do is I want to say, you spelled, and then whatever the word is, correctly. So to do that, I'm going to need a couple of join blocks. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get two join blocks, and you'll see why right now. I'll say you spelled, and then I'll put my secret word here correctly. Correctly. Great work. So now if I grab 
a let's see what I want to do this in this the uh, text to speech block. We should be able to see our work. One little thing I want to do is I want to um actually show the guess the letter the letter that the word oh sorry the letter that the user guessed up on the screen. So how can I do that? I'm gonna first create a guess variable, and I'm going to set this guess variable to a blank string. So up here, I'm gonna just gonna put a space right here, okay? Or actually, I'll just like delete it. I just won't put anything here. And now what I can do is I can update this guest variable with whatever letter that the user chose um, so that it updates on the screen. So first I'm gonna unclick counter and I'm gonna also unclick our secret word so we can't see it. And if you right click on this guest word, we can say large readout and it kind of shows this um, this block. And let me run the it secret. real quick so that it's empty. So here's our empty block that we got. What we can actually do is we can add the letters that the user guesses to this block so that it kind of shows the progress of whatever word that they guess. So inside of this if statement, I'm actually going to grab the set block again, and I'm going to join whatever used to be in the guess block with the current answer that the user gave us. So here I'm going to say set guess to and then join and then I'm gonna say guess, whatever guess was before, which right now is a blank string. And when we add the answer to it, it's now going to show whatever the user said plus the guess, which is the blank string inside of here. And then when we keep guessing, it's gonna keep showing that new added letter with it to the um with it to the with the original the original uh variable. So let me show you what I mean. Let's try it. The secret word is amazing. So the secret Type the word letters in one at a time in order. I'm going to say A. Correct. M. Correct. And notice how it's adding to this, right? A. Correct. Z. Correct. I. Correct. N. Correct. G. Correct. You spelled Amazon correctly. Great work. And there we go. We created a working spelling B. All right, so that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed working on this project with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or ideas for future videos, please let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, I will see ya. Bye.